We are joined by Senator Robin Webb with the 18th District, which of course is the Ashland area. Yes. Uh, and you have been in the headlines quite a bit recently for Brady Industries, both uh, good and, and bad. Can you kind of tell me where you feel like things stand now? Because there was a, a meeting uh, in this last week with some of the folks from Brady and uh, in the Senate and the House representatives. Kind of tell me where you think things stand right now. Well, as a member of the Appropriations Revenue Committee, um, Chairman McDaniel, we discussed having them in for an update on the project prior to the change in leadership uh, that the board made. So uh, they had planned on coming before us just to give us a status update, which they did. They didn't have to, and we appreciated that. Um, so the project's moving forward. You know, there's been some um, bumps in the road, so to speak, lately with the corporate governance, uh, internal board uh, machinations, if you will, that really aren't that remarkable to me, uh, coming from a corporate background, uh, but certainly, you know, could uh, raise some flags for, for other individuals that might not understand what's what might be going on. Yeah, so we don't see all of the behind the scenes things, but when you talk in terms of money and uh, a catchy phrase is, is there a path forward, right? Um, we need to see a path forward to about a half a billion dollars by the end of the year. And I think that's where people have a tough time wrapping their minds around this actually happening. Well, when you look at the potential for investment capital, uh, domestic or international, you know that's really not that much money in, in the grand scheme of, of investment capital. So I think there is a, pla a path forward, and something that you've n I've never heard uh, disparaged is the process or the need for the plant and the process and how it could contribute. Uh, to not national defense and, our, and of course our transition transformation of our economic region that's took a lot of hits. We've been in the news a lot, not just for Brady, but we're mourning the loss of Our Lady of Belfont yes. Hospital. Uh, AK Steel has pulled out and, and we're you know working with Cliffs now to try to keep a presence there for our steel workers and that sec sector of the economy. So, you know, we've been in the news a lot and um, but we've got a lot of positives, and Brady has brought forth a lot of positives for our area. I mean, international marketing, uh, where people know where we are now. They know the attributes. We've got the best workforce in the world, tradesmen and women. I put them up against anybody. We're in a great location, river, rail, uh, interstate, highway. I mean, we've gotten a lot of positive benefit from uh, the entity so far, and I think we'll, we'll continue to get more. I, I can't imagine anyone not seeing the benefits of it happening. I mean, we're talking about, you know, better than 600 really good paying jobs in an area, as you mentioned, that has taken some hits lately. Um, I, I think the question is when, you know, and can people hang on um, for, you know, I, I don't, I, I think they're still hoping that, you know, 2021, it's a go. Um, but I just, I, I wonder with the change in leadership and, and all of that, if it can happen soon enough. Well, I mean, it should have, we wanted it to happen yesterday. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's where we are in all this as, as a region and uh, our leadership. And even the General Assembly, the taxpayers of Kentucky made an investment. And uh, I'm sure Commonwealth Seed uh, would like to have some return as well. But, uh, you know, these things take time. You've got a lot of factors globally the volatility of, of other markets, the volatility of, of governments, relationships. Uh, and what I just don't, I don't like seeing it, what I feel somewhat is politicized or regionalized or uh, because of foreign investment and, and those buzzwords that we've heard over and over that just kind of have a chilling effect perhaps uh, and maybe you know, just turn the, the tide from optimism to pessimism or skepticism, which we're all skeptic on. I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I've, I've you know, been on the budget committee for a long time. I'm physically conservative, and I'm pretty much a skeptic too. And, uh, but I do have faith in this project. I've got faith in the leadership, uh, regardless of who's at the helm. You've got the same board of directors. And those internal machinations happen in companies all across the world. And I, you know, that's not for us to comment on because that's, we're not, uh, no, we don't have that information before us to even make a judgment. But certainly I've got confidence in, in the 
uh, investors and the board. And some, uh, like Mr. Price, I, I'm familiar with him. My background's in the energy industry, and I've been familiar with him for decades. You're also an attorney, so yes. you're familiar with uh, filing of lawsuits when things maybe don't go uh, your way. And Craig Bruchard has filed uh, such a suit. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at all of the details, but it, it looks like he's kind of asking for this board to be disbanded and to kind of resume his position uh, as to where he was. I don't, you know, I don't know how that will all shake out or how that um, affects the, the end result. Well, and, and we don't either. And I, I've been corporate counsel for the fourth largest coal company in America. So uh, some of this corporate stuff is as remarkable to me, perhaps because I, I am a lawyer and familiar with the uh, machinations of corporations. But I think uh, Mr. Bouchard is certainly still the, a face of the company. He, uh, I give him all the credit for the siding and any benefit that our area will get, has gotten and will get out of this because it was his choice to put it there. And so uh, we love Craig for that. And certainly uh, I, I hope that it can be resolved uh, in a business-like fashion that will not deter investment and we can move the project forward for, for all of the investors. Well, I mean, we've got Mr. Bouchard's an investor, the other investors on the board. We've got uh, investors, common people, you know, and, and uh, at home that have a faith in the project and, and have put money in it. So. Uh, we've got a, a lot of stakeholders to consider. Yeah, including, like you said, the, the taxpayers. Uh, I know you probably don't want to think about this, but should the project not happen, does that money get recouped? Well, certainly, you know, Commonwealth Seed is, a lot of people don't understand how it got there. Commonwealth Seed's been in existence for a number of years. It has put tens of millions of dollars in industries, a lot of startups in uh, areas like bioscience, uh, advanced manufacturing. So it was a perfect fit for this. And it's through the economic development cabinet. They're pretty autonomous. They have their own board. And there is some risk involved. Anytime government gets involved in, in any, uh, it operates sort of like a revolving loan fund. And it's not that remarkable from any other. So. We try to have clawback provisions. That's a term you'll hear a lot about uh, clawback provisions. Economic Development Cabinet has, uh, is normally uh, in, in charge of that in the negotiations with the company. And a lot of times we don't have, in my opinion, historically enough information mm -hmm. about that. But notwithstanding the role of economic development, dealing with corporations, their secrets, competition from other states, and all that. Uh, I, I kind of give them a little flexibility, but you know, historically, no. On other projects, we haven't had the information that we probably need as the appropriators of, of revenue. You have to have some faith in your cabinet and the people running it. Now, uh, I think I said this on the floor the other day, if, if the project would not come to fruition, and I mean, right now there's no default, there's nothing, um, no, no default or, or no reason to, to consider that now, and these companies have uh, property and they ha are going concern. They have subsidiaries that are going concerns. So um, $15 million in the grand scheme of things sounds like a lot of money, but in, in what we do as a, as a state and economic development, not so much every day. So um, we, will, we would review that agreement uh, for clawback. Uh, we'll, we'll probably, you know, it's always prudent to, to know what you're looking at mm -hmm. prior to the needs. I have no problem with that on any project. So we'll look at, at the, what's been negotiated and what uh, the former cabinet you know, has done and uh, deal with it. And, and we'll be just as, uh, I'll be the first one in line to, to try to get the money back if it fails. But right now there's nothing in default and there's no need for that. So when you say that a lot of this is not remarkable, right? It's the, it's the way corporations operate. It happens every day, all the time. Why do you think this one then takes on so uh, so much more uh, of the headlines? I guess is it is it the uh, the Russian involvement? Is it the the government involvement? You know, the the taxpayer money. What is it about this that you think makes it seem? remarkable to people. Well, taxpayer money is, is, is uh, in a lot of projects throughout the state. So I don't know that that's all it is. And, and like I said, the amount is really not that substantial in, in larger scale and uh, in other areas. 
I think uh, the word Russian uh, in this political climate yeah. nationally and internationally certainly has, uh, sh in uh, the dynamic of the, the tariffs, uh, the fact that it's an election year, Senator McCall's on the ballot, whatever the case may be, it's a perfect storm to get a lot of national attention. And, and that only adds to the volatility of the potential for to raise capital as well as, um, you know, just the project as a whole. But I mean, not, if, if we have a problem, it's on our soil. I don't have a problem with that foreign investment. If we had a problem with foreign investment, I'd have to send Vesuvius, who is going to hire some of the Brady students at, at KCTC, uh, back to London. I'd have to send Smithfield back to China and Toyota back to Japan. I mean, you know, that to me, the, re the foreign investment is not a, a problem. We do it all over the place. So, and then I get a little stung on the regional issue. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, we, uh, I've always uh, governed as a commonwealth and tried to help other areas. Uh, Louisville, I helped write the TIP legislation to get the Yum Center when I was in the House. I mean, I've always worked on, on these issues, economic development, tax, uh, the budget. So I've always operate, tried to govern as a whole, you know, and uh, sometimes I feel like Eastern Kentucky gets uh, the microscope that maybe other, other projects in other areas don't. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a little territorial in that regard and I'm protective in that regard and uh, coming from the coal industry and, and, and seeing, you know, what all's happened and, and we were the economic driver uh, providing power and, and tax money for this state uh, from Pike for a long time to my mm -hmm. district in, in the coal industry and incidentals. I was part of that. So, yeah, I get a little t territorial and uh, think that this project in particular is getting a little too much scrutiny from uh, outside of the area in, uh, you know, we're not in the Northern, tri uh, the Golden Triangle. We're not in Louisville. We're not in Lexington. We're in Northeast Kentucky trying to transform an economy and and uh, I'm pretty sensitive about that. So I know you can't predict the future, but how, how con what level of confidence do you have that one day this will open and employ a good number of folks in your area? I'm still optimistic and not only employ, we've already seen benefit. Now, you know, and I, the concern that I have immediately is, is our students that have enrolled in that program. But I'm happy to report that, that you know, some of them have been offered jobs and one thing about that, it's a great degree to have in, it, in this kind of advanced technology and market. I don't think uh, they will have problems being employable. Now, they might have to work away for a while, perhaps. But certainly, uh, I've got a big population of people that, that have to do that anyway. It's not the ideal thing, but as tradesmen and women now with the, the shutting down the coal fire plants and whatnot, you know, people have to travel. So uh, they might not be able to work at home as soon as they'd like, but I'm still optimistic in the project. Like I said, you know, we've got, uh, I've never heard anybody uh, negate or impugn the process or the need for, for that type of uh, processing and, and aluminum. And certainly uh, with where we're well suited, you know, with the aerospace industry, we have Moorhead close by, KCTC is there uh, next door to the site to provide uh, tailored curriculum like they're doing now. Uh, I, so, you know, the immediate concern of those students that have invested their time and money in a, in a degree that, uh, but I, I do think they'll be employable and I'm, I'm, I am optimistic about the project. And uh, I think we all need to be. All right, while I have you here, you talked about the Commonwealth as a whole. I got a couple <laughs> questions real quick. Uh, I knew it wasn't <laughs> gonna get off that easy. Yeah, medical marijuana. <laughs> Where do you think there is a path forward for that? I do. Uh, it's really gained a lot of momentum. Um, and I've always supported uh, regulated medicinal cannabis. Uh, you know, and I always reserve uh, vote, my vote on the bill until I see it. But I did co-sponsor uh, Senator West bill because I think the conversation still ha has to, it's time for it. And uh, with the hemp industry, and, and everything involved. I mean, we still have work to do in the hemp industry mm -hmm. on a federal and state level. And so um, I think it's a good thing and I think it's, it's time. And I, and I think there is a path. I think you're gonna see that in the next week or so. Well, the, the fact that we could likely have a vote in mm -hmm. the House, I think is already showing. Pretty monumental, that there's, yeah. Yeah, that there's, there's a, a path forward. And uh, sports betting, that is something we've talked a whole lot about. And I know there's a lot of uh, interest, especially when you're here in a, you know, 
in UK territory and all that. Um, where do you see that? I think I think it has a, a a chance to pass. I haven't really counted votes or anything. I you know I'm sort of uh, it's hard for me to predicate a budget on gaming. I've never done that. I think that's bad policy. But certainly uh, it would bring in uh, some revenue. But there is you know opposition to that. I'd, and uh, so but I think I think based it on its movement again and uh, indicators. Um, people that have recently maybe softened a little bit mm -hmm. on the issue in our chamber, that it, it would also have a chance. Wonderful. Senator Robin Webb, thank you so yep. much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.